Now we're taking a look at a stochastic, and for some reason, a stochastic is a, uh, I, I would say, a much better crossover type of indicator than a MACD. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, that just simply has to do with the way the math comes out. Um, in uh, in one of my newsletters, I dealt with the whole stochastic and and how that uh, how the stochastic. Uh, moves relative to what the market moves. So, you know, you just get, I think, a better feel for a crossover on a stochastic. Um, having said that, you can also get a stochastic to diverge. Uh, you know, that's not beyond any stretch of the imagination. In fact, here uh, is a divergence right here. Uh, you see price making a higher high, stochastic making a lower low. Um, that would be considered indicator divergence and possibly bearish for um, the, the market that you're measuring. Uh, but I'm not going to deal with stochastic divergence here. What I am going to deal with is stochastic crossover. Uh, you can see here that we have a, we're looking at a stochastic crossover. Uh, the crossover actually occurs here uh, after the, uh, this up bar is closed. In fact, let me move this over so you can see. Um, you know, right there, here, let me give you an example. Um, you know, obviously we're looking for the blue line to be lower than red. Okay, so go over one more bar. You can see there that the blue line is barely, barely lower than the red. Okay, so technically speaking, they have crossed, but remember, that cross is on the close of this bar. So look at how far down the market's moved. I mean, that's, you know, you're, that's 100 pips right there. So... You know, like I said, crossovers are late, but you know, you can see there the market dumps off, and uh, you know, I don't know, maybe you could make some some money in there, but holding on might be difficult. At any rate, how you know could we possibly um, use the crossover as confirmation or something? Yeah, but let me do this. Let me just start with this bar here. The bar has closed. We we're being precise with our measurements, and we say, aha, we have a crossover. Okay, now we have to go back in time here. 726. And here we are, 26. Move forward a little bit more. There. So now we're looking at the 26. Move this up. So what do we see here? Well, again, what are, you know, what are some of the, what are some of the warning signs? Um, you know, now, now we're not looking at a particular price level, and you noticed, um, you know, in the last session on MACD, I did not talk about wide range bars or tail closes gaps because we're not talking about a specific price area. Um, but we are looking at, we are going to go back and talk about, um, and, and this, um, you know, maybe as a, as a way of, of recapping, if you haven't watched the MACD, you're going to want to do that because in the MACD, I talk about. Um, what constitutes strength coming into the market. So here, uh, since we're looking at a topping formation, let's talk about weakness. Um, remember, for weakness to come in, let me go back to uh, our little example here. I'll bring up the Japanese yen. So what are we talking about when, when weakness comes into the market? Well, it, the important thing for you to realize is we're talking about the an active an active I, I was gonna say an active activity. Um, well, yeah, that's good enough. We're talking about an active activity rather than a passive activity. Specifically, it's not as if there just aren't any sellers, there aren't any buyers, so the market is churning around trying to find its level. I think that that's really bad thinking. When it comes to liquid markets, um, people are watching this stuff all day long, all night long, every little move, every little news announcement is analyzed in you know excruciatingly minute detail. 